Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Happy Saturday to you. I hope you're doing wonderful. As you can see, I have a special guest in here, the DIYer, the fixer. How you doing, man? Good, Roger. Welcome to you? Dallas. Thank you. This has been fun because we, man, we've already shot a podcast. We've already shot a video. And it's really interesting to get to get in here and talk about DIY and plumbing and the way things are a little bit different. And one of the neat things that, that we talked about during the podcast, and we'll talk about it more in a little bit, is the fact that, you know, all flips aren't done the same. And I know that because I've been called in by flippers to do some work. And, you know, they don't always want to do everything right. So to get to hear from somebody who's done flips for some, some big projects and things like that, it, it's kind of neat, but we're going to get going in here. Let me fix a couple of things on my end. Construction cronies. Chris is in the house already. What is up, brother? Good to see you. All right. So th there he is. Chris, what's going on? Good to see you, sir. Here's it. Okay. And man, those of y'all that normally catch us over on Facebook, I see that we're still not broadcasting. For some reason, we've had a problem syncing up with Facebook here lately, but we're live here on YouTube and Colton's back there working on it. So hopefully those come through quickly. Man, how's the world in Massachusetts? It's different than Texas. Yeah. It's a lot cooler <clears throat> right now. It's yeah, it's a little warm here right now. Yeah. Uh, we are we're what 107 yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. That was like six or seven o'clock last night. Yep, or eight o'clock. When I got back to the house last night, it was still over 100 degrees. Yeah, it's about 20 degrees hotter than I'm used to. You know, <laughs> you, you know, but but man, you survived. You, you hadn't yeah. you hadn't passed that. You hadn't said, look, I can't go outside. Nothing at all like that. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna talk today about. When to draw the line on DIY versus professional. Now, if this is your first time here and you ended up catching us on a replay, you might want to watch it. We got some good people in here. Great advice. Uh, whether you're wanting to learn plumbing, DIY, man, plumbing is your DIY in it yourself, and things like that. Got some cool stuff to talk about. If you're in here and you're somebody wanting to get into the trades, guys, this is a great place to hang out. Now, if you're looking for something specific, jump over into the videos, do a search over there, find out more what you're looking for. But we're going to jump in here and go through some comments real quick. And then we're going to get back to drawing the line between DIY and professional and why you would need to. He's in Massachusetts. He's like, look, we always call a plumber. There's a reason for that. I'm in Texas. I tell everybody, look, if it's your homestead, you can fix it yourself. There's a reason for that. So we're going to jump in and talk about it. Home rapid repair in the house. How are you doing? Uh, Chris, again, construction cronies. Good to see you, sir. Cole Gibson. Are you local in Wiley, Texas? Cause I saw one of your signs. Well, the sign that you saw is actually where we're at right now. Uh, this is the outhouse. They, they named this place Rogers outhouse. Love, love so, the name. <laughs> you, you know, it, it'll, it'll work. So yeah, Cole, I, I am. Thank you very much. Robert, man, I want to get this right. Hacentiful. Robert Hacentiful. How are you? Greatly appreciated. You know, the neat thing, and this has been neat about talking to Matt. Look, we want to show people the right way to do things. I started doing YouTube just over five years ago, and it was because I wanted to show people how to do things the right way. That way, if they had a problem and they couldn't afford to call a plumber, they at least knew how to fix things right. And I pissed off a lot of plumbers. I had a lot of plumbers send me messages, dude, you're taking money out of our pocket. Do you have tradespeople call you mad because you're showing people how to do things the right way? I get messages. And by the way, it's not, according to a lot of people, it's not the right way. There's, yeah. there's so many different ways to do things. But yeah, I have had some comments, um, you know, leave it to the professionals and uh, it's a little irritating. But that's okay. Everybody has their own opinions. Uh, I believe that a lot of people can do their own home repairs and not have an issue. And should be able to each and every day. Agreed. Squirt says, good morning, crew. How are you? Metal Jake says, hey, y'all. Hope everyone had a productive week. Made another Saturday. Well, number one, welcome back. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I was going to stop and talk, but I'm going to go ahead and go to this next one right here because Chris says, my line stops at the plumbing part. And 
Yours does too. It does. Why in Boston, Massachusetts, if you're a remodeler, DIYer, all the above, why not plumbing? Just you just can't. <laughs> as as a oh, homeowner, but I'm telling you, you can, man. You, I can you, show you yeah. how to do oh, it. Oh, I'm sure you can, and I'm sure people do. Uh, but you can do your own electrical. You can rewire your whole house. You can reframe your whole house. Just get the proper permits with your town. But you have to be a licensed plumber to do your own plumbing in Massachusetts. And, and if you live in Texas, that's a little bit different. You can still do the work. You still got to pull permits. You still got it inspected. But you can do that if the home is registered as your homestead, meaning tax wise. Look, I can own 10 homes, but I can only live in one of them. So that's the one that's registered as my homestead. That one, I'm allowed to do all the work I want to do it. So very interesting there. So Chris, I love that. Uh, I pretty much draw the line at anything other than plumbing. And you know, not really. As you can tell, uh, Matt and I were in my office over there. I've got the link below. Y'all want to check out the new YouTube channel. The reason being, that is where we'll put the podcast up of Matt and I. And that's a neat channel because that's what it is. Me talking to other tradespeople. And Chris, I need to talk to you about coming down. Uh, it'll be good. Andy, the X-Tech says it is 70 degrees here right now. Oh, Andy. Uh, yeah, we're, we're already over 50. I'm, I'm assuming you're in Massachusetts. You know him? Okay. Yeah. So do me a favor. Everybody in here, put in where you're at and what you do, uh, where you're located. If you want to put the temperature in, Andy, 70 degrees. I'm kind of jealous right now, but I appreciate it. Mackie Pops, good afternoon to you. And I'm assuming this is someone you know, uh, Miss Fixer. Ah, Miss Fixer. There ah, she is. Ah, I know her a little bit. See his face change a little bit. His whole tone of voice changed. He's like, ah. She's watching with the kids right now. I love that. I see that. Hi, Dada. Hi, guys. Yes. How are y'all doing? Thank you for letting Dad come down here with yeah. me. I appreciate that. Thank that you. is pretty cool. I call the plumber too. So, what is a DIYer? In places of the country where they say you can't do plumbing without a license, what are you allowed to do? What what do you think you're allowed to do? Let's put it that way. I'm not going to say what you're going to say is legally true or anything uh, like that. Um, I mean, I don't find anything wrong with taking the back of a toilet off, fixing whatever needs to be fixed there. If you got a toilet repair kit, you can fix that. So, uh, swapping out a faucet, I don't think is a big deal. Again, maybe depending on the town you're in, that might be pushing it. Um, but when it comes to, you know, drain pipes and the feeds and all that stuff, this just can't touch it. And that's interesting but because, you know, I, I used to study plumbing code and, and I really don't anymore. Now it's just get out there and do plumbing. But because I'm not involved with big jobs, you had to know the code, you had to know the addendums, you had to know everything. But I always thought it was nice that in Texas, you said, hey, look, if if you want to fix your plumbing, fix it. Just get it inspected like a plumber would have to. Well, a plumber doesn't have to get an inspection for rebuilding his tank in his toilet. So I, I love that. It, it's neat. And I remember going to do plumbing at a job one time. The homeowner had ran his own electrical. And he literally he said, look, he said, the inspector's been out three times. He keeps telling me what I'm doing wrong. I keep having to fix it. What do you think? Like you fix it. Uh, they're, they're telling you what the right way to do it is, and that's what you want to do. And I just, I think that's always a big, big deal. Uh, Chris says, it's funny. I get people all the time saying I am crazy for teaching people for free. I believe there's enough work to go around. We need uh, more tradespeople. We need more tradespeople so bad. How is it up north in Boston? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's the same everywhere. The People are going into to school, not, you know, right out of high school. And you went to college. Yeah, I did. And got in the trades. Yeah. Well, got in the trades, <laughs> put myself through school, and realized I wanted to jump back and be a full-time YouTuber, fixing it. my own house. I love it. Chris says, I can wire up anything, build anything. I can't get the plumbing right. I've tried, and usually get soaked. Uh, you know, we've talked about that. It, it can, it yeah. can happen. Yeah, why? It can happen remodeling it can happen doing a lot of things 
have you ever got really just soaked on a job? Oh, you were, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 uh, all kinds of things can happen, and everybody makes mistakes. Yes. Try Red Trash says, what's up? How we doing? Uh, there we go. We are working on the Facebook pages. We've got the main page up. Looks like we still got uh, two of them not there, but we're working on them. Gareth Thompson says, I hate DIYers. And see, my thing is, I love DIYers because here's the thing. Everybody can afford a plumber, not with the prices they charge these days. And here's the thing. If everybody could, plumbers would be charging away a lot more because I think I'm going to say 30% of the people fix their own stuff. 30%. 5% of them fix it right. I'm probably close. We're trying to fix that, though. Well, we're trying to fix that. You're right. And, and that's why we do what we do. But, you know, there used to be a plumbing company in Garland that had a sign out front that said, we repair what your husband fixed. I get it. Okay, I get it. Pretty but good marketing. if everybody called a true professional, and that's why I said, look, I love DIYers. I love handyman. I don't want to get out and fix one shingle on the roof. I don't want to get out and fix one rotted post. I'd rather call somebody and say, hey, you come fix it. You're going to do it right. You're going to jack it up. You're, you're going you're gonna to take care of the load-bearing wall where it doesn't fall. You're going to get the right people in there to do the right thing. Whereas a plumber, I may say, Look, let's tear down this wall. We'll hurry up and get the other one to up. Or let's tear down this wall, and then we'll stick it to by 400. Yeah, you're probably not going to get it under it then. Not the best idea. Yeah. Uh, I like this. To red trash says DIYers hate you too. Okay, number one, we, we, we don't need to be hating everybody. No. We need to understand that it takes all of us to make the world go around. And, and, and it really does. Uh, I talk trash about electricians probably every day. But, man, I love having them around because when I need one, I don't want to get shocked and I ain't jacking with it. Uh, now you'll do electricity because you y'all can do that. Yeah. DI wires, remodelers, y'all can do all that. Or I love yeah. that. As a homeowner, you can okay. pull the permit as long that. as you get inspected. You're good to go. Uh, Chris, yes, sir. Uh, that that and check that out because that's where I'm doing my podcast, guys. If y'all haven't checked it out, there's a, a banner scrolling across the bottom. The trade talks. Uh, I will actually see if I can jump over there. And copy the link. Actually, Colton, if you're watching, you might can probably beat me to it. But if I do just a couple of things here real quick, go here and hit pause real fast. Oh, we're live, so I don't have to. If I go way down here, watch this. There it is. So I am going to put in the link right here. I figured by the time I had this done, one of y'all learned a great it channel, anyway. by the way. It, yeah, I'll tell you what, I love it. I, I listen really to it do. all the way. It, it's, man, man, I've, I've interviewed some great people, so yeah. I, I do. I, I enjoy what I get to do. So as y'all can see, I did put a link in there. I'm not going to pin it up. The, yeah, you know what? Oh, it did get pinned. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Uh, and do you like how oh, 65? Okay, you must have a good following here because it says 60% of the people, over 60% right now, prefer cold. I prefer yesterday over freezing any day of the week. You know what's funny? I kind of prefer the heat over over the cold. It's not that bad. No, it's like, no. okay, you know what? You know why it's not that bad? How long have you been out in it? An hour? Yeah. yeah total? Too long, yeah. You know, 10 minutes here, five minutes here, something like that. Yep. Guys, we go from an AC truck to an AC building. But you know what? When you go outside and walk around, it's like, okay, you know what? A little heat here. I we, love it. We also have cold like seven months out of the year, so I really don't mind having a little heat right now. Yeah, I enjoy it. We get cold about seven days out of the year, and that's <laughs> almost too many. Uh, H H Texas, H H H H H H. Man, I don't know. I want to say Houston, but that'd be <laughs> Houston. Uh, I'm not sure. To red rash, tier trier trier red rash. Hope I'm getting it right, brother. Professional YouTuber. I'm assuming that's what that is. Y-T-E-R, YouTuber, hopefully. Kevin Orr, or maybe it's a DIY. Sure. Kevin Orr says, construction cronies, thank you. There are many that just can't afford what some are asking. I have found that I could do as good a job 
as many that have come in my house because I care. And Kevin, that, that's neat because, and if you notice, there, there's really a, a common thread to just about everybody that I have in here. And they all want to be the best at what they do. They, they all want to do things right. They all want to show people the right way. We still make mistakes. Uh, you know, talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. We still make mistakes. If y'all haven't seen the video where I poured lead on the propane tank, you know, it's probably not a smart, I know, I know probably not a smart thing to do. I, I know it's not a smart thing to do, but it had been a long time since I poured lead. I thought, you know what, man, we'll just pour a lead joint. You don't do it very often. There's a lot of things you forget, and it's like, you know what? I'm not going to hide it. Uh, we messed up. So, yeah. And when you care and it's your own house, you're going to slow down and do things a little bit different. How is remodeling your entire house? Uh, it's a challenge when you, you know, you have a bathroom. Uh, it was easier when we didn't have three kids. Uh, but we're, we're pretty much done now we went one room at a time started with the, the main bedroom went the way around did the kitchen did the bathroom uh living room and it's pretty much done first floor i, I love that and i've told kids i've told people getting in the trades that you know everybody wants to get in they, they want to buy a house that's like as big as their parents or bigger and, and all this i'm like you know what buy a little house that gives you enough for you can live in Two, three bedrooms. So if you want to have a kid or two, that's good. Start off remodeling the master bedroom and the master bathroom. Because then you're then you're you are you have got your sanctuary. Then I would go to the kitchen. Because hopefully you're sitting out having family meals there. But then it's like the living room, the dining room, the bedrooms. Pick a room. It doesn't matter at that point. And just don't try to do everything all at one time. Yeah. And you said you started with the bedroom. Started with the bedroom. I actually waited on the kitchen for a while. Uh, I did the bedroom, jumped in there so we could stay in there, did another bedroom, and then I did the living room. Then I did the bathroom. Then I did the kitchen. And then the last bedroom, or I added a bedroom. That's so cool. So cool. See, I've got a barn out here, Chris. I'm, I'm looking at your comment. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Love that. I build the walls and ceilings, structural and interior. I've got a barn that I've been trying to figure out what to do. And we've talked about turning the roof off, raising the roof. Uh, architectural sheet metal was in here last week. Uh, I'd love to have them come out and put a, a standing seam roof on it. But um, I've got a mastermind in town. Uh, we all went out to dinner last night, so you got to meet all those guys. Yeah. Where we rented this place, they took a warehouse that is probably. I'm going to say 40 by 80, maybe not quite that big. And they literally, in one end of it, inside, not attached to the walls, they built two bedrooms, a double bathroom, another bathroom. And it's like, go almost up to the walls, but close it all in. There's an AC unit on top that keeps it all cold. They insulated the inside of the roof. It's a metal roof. And then on the other end, and, and the entire metal roof is insulated from one and the other. On the other end, they built a laundry room that has an AC going in it, and then an AC tube going all the way down the center of this thing with vents coming out. And I'm like, that's what I want to do in the barn here. So now I've got to figure out if I'm going to raise the roof or what I'm going to do. Man, I got excited looking at this thing. So great ideas, things coming. Okay, so we got Gareth Tompkins, a plumber from Long Beach, California. Perfect. Uh, Zachary Ramos says, Lubbock, Texas, journeyman plumber. Uh, and we got Gareth right there. Home Rapid Repairs, Midwest, hot this weekend, home inspection and home improvement. Now, I love the fact that you do both. And, and I've always thought of that. You see these home inspectors that come out and point out everything in the world, all these things. And then they're like, well, I don't know how to fix it. Like, man, open, open a repair business and mm. say, hey, I'll do the inspection. Oh, by the way, here's what I would charge to fix it or call somebody else. At least then you're giving them an option. I like that. Uh, Try to wrap says water valves, diverters, top outs. Yeah. And, and so if that stuff you can't do, and I understand the valves, it's interesting. I like that. Mikey Pops, New Jersey master plumber. Oh, 
part of New Jersey. I've been up to Piscataway. Went up to the Standard one week. Uh, okay, so that's it. So what you can do in Canada. Okay, I like that. Uh, there you go. And no AC work. So can you do AC work? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's all under. It depends on what it is. I mean, the duct work and, and yeah, I'm thinking it's all the unit, the duct work and all that. all tied together. Okay. Plumbers here don't do that. Not really. That's HVAC techs, completely different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's yeah. It depends on their system, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Construction cronies. Chris says, Kevin Orr, I agree. Pay attention, learn the right way. Most of this stuff is achievable on your own. Just need the tools and someone to show you how. And see, Chris, I like that because I, I watch your channel. I'm literally, I'm walking through this warehouse and thinking, you know, I thought, you know, we could build walls or wood, really doesn't matter. But I'm thinking metal walls from watching you. And it's like, you know, we could build this and I could build two bedrooms back here. One, one of these bedrooms has four queen size bunk beds. So a queen, a queen, a queen, and a queen. And they're all joined together on one wall. It is so cool. And I'm like, man, I want to build something like this because then when we do our league detection training school here, which we're trying to build right now, now I've got a place for the guys to stay. So I love that. Kevin Orr says, 80 and just retired LEO. Good deal. Congratulations. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready to get there. And if you weren't 80 and just retired, dude, you're doing fantastic. Yeah. Metal Jake says, we had a midweek break from the excessive heat warnings in New Orleans, but it's back. Did a nice copper awning that hit my week. Came out awesome. Do you ever do any exterior work like awnings, pergolas, carports? Uh, I haven't had a chance at my house, but, mm -hmm. you know, I built a shed there. I've done a, a deck. I just built a patio. Uh, yeah, I did a front on, on the front of the house. Uh, Houses. I love that. Yeah. I, I don't know why. It's always, nice. It's, yeah, oh, it is. I know. And, and that's that's the eye candy. You know, that's the thing when people are driving around, they look around and they're like, ooh, I like that. Yeah. You know, this warehouse I'm standing in Dallas, people drive by and think, why is this here? But man, when you walk inside, it's like, okay, this is cool. Uh, Gary says, we have a hurricane tomorrow. Ooh, oh boy. I guess you're in California. Hurricane Hillary is coming to California. Oh. True Red Rash says, look, Kevin, if you want to level up, just go buy a propane torch. Man, I love it. I, look, I love to solder. Uh, I think, I, I'll tell you what, it blows my mind when I get plumbers in here. Do the plumbers in your area ever do solder anymore? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. I'll literally get plumbers in here sometimes that say, the company we work for will not let us do solder. Really? Their boss will not let them have a torch, will not let them buy fittings, will not let them. And I'm like, dude, that, that is part of the trade. Uh, blows my mind. Well, there's a lot of, you know, press and, and stuff like that, Texas, and um, where a lot of people don't have to. Uh, apparently, you got relatives in Texas. I do. Aunt Sharon, maybe? Aunt Sharon, yeah. Looky here <laughs> from Lufkin. I've got friends that used to live in Lufkin. Uh, proud of my nephew, Matt. Welcome to hot Texas. Yes, Thank it you. is. <laughs> Make sure you stock up on propane, solder, fresh flux. Yeah, all the good stuff. Fresh pencils. I like that. Or fresh erasers. Gareth Hopkins says lots of French drain damage coming up. You know, and, and here's the thing, guys. Look, in, in a hurricane, you've got to be ready for the winds. But if you have a lot of external water heaters, tankless water heaters, make sure you've got parts available in advance. Literally, when we get ready for a freeze here, we go out and uh, push to connect fittings, uh, pro press fittings, solder fittings, any tankless water heaters or parts we can get. Go buy 10 tankless water heaters. Put them in, in your shop. If you don't sell them or don't need them, that's fine. Carry them back. But, man, don't get to where you're needing parts. Andy the X-Tech, I like that name. This new Hampshire auto tech and YouTuber. I do my own plumbing Good for you. That's right. Andy's in New Hampshire. Uh huh. Uh, plus fresh PVC, PVC glue. Yeah. Prior, trier red rash. Uh, fresh glue. Glue will solidify and heat. Boy, not the truth. Uh, 
get a flare kit at Harbor Freight. You know, we actually, I, and I didn't even thought about a flare kit uh, because I've got a dozen of them over the years that we don't even flare anything anymore. Uh, so that that's interesting. But yeah, we, we went to Harbor Freight the other day and, and got a tool bag. It literally cost us about half the price of what it cost us at Walmart. Walmart. At Lowe's, uh, at Lowe's we, we, we did a lot of the cobalt tools at uh, Harbor Freight. We did a lot of the whatever brand there is, Pittsburgh or something. But man, a lot of people complain about it. But I remember when I first got into trades, I was buying tools at Walmart. I bought my first work boots at Walmart. How was it when you got in? Do you have money to go buy new tools and good tools? Yeah, no money. I had no tools, no money. Nothing. Yeah, they, they laugh at me because the only tool that I, I, I believe in spending good money on is a tape measure. And people say, well, it's not going to last you long. Oh, it is if you take care of it. And if you spend good money on it, you're going to take better care of it. But then I go in Harbor Freight and they're like, well, if you buy Pittsburgh, it's got a lifetime guarantee. Okay, starting out, dude, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Buy two of them. So when one breaks, you carry it back. You've still got the. Uh, and a slot hates the hot wires. You know, and, and I don't know that everybody hates the hot wires. Some people are just like, I could never fix anything. They don't have the dexterity, the manual skills <clears throat> to be able to get in and do it. Uh, big game changer. Uh, yeah, dollies are huge. Yeah, and I say what, we're again at Harbor Freight. Uh, we've been moving a ton of stuff. This studio that we're in, I don't even know if y'all know this. This is the first time in this studio. Last week, we were in the other studio. We were in Richardson. We, Randy and I came in and built walls. Randy did most of the work. I'm not going to BS anybody. And when I say BS, that's bull bridge. Uh, <laughs> but Randy did like all the soundproofing. I did part of the carpet in here. Uh, I cut a lot of this wood while Randy was in here hanging it up. So, man, we got in here and made this thing work. But it's DIY. We did it ourselves. And it looks good. And, and, and you know, yeah, yeah we, and Roger. And Roger. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Man, yeah, man, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what we've had a blast. But yeah, we were at Harbor Freight the other day, and they had just one of those little furniture dumps. It was like 20 bucks. And and he's like, you know, what? I should have came out and bought a couple of these because we had some bigger ones and those little ones just freaking come in handy. Happy Saturdays from Iowa. Welcome all the way down here. Not by any chance in Moscow, are you? Uh, I used to know somebody from Moscow. I love DIY wires. Uh, cool work for me, more work for me to fix. Yo, know, and, and here's the thing. It's like that ad I told you all a while ago that, that one of the companies here used to have. A, we repair what your husband fixed. Part of my thing is when I first started making my YouTube videos, it was to make my phone ring at my plumbing company. A lot of times that phone would ring because I'd make a video and somebody out there would say, I like this and I love that I know how to do it, but I can't do that. But you know what? I'm in Dallas and Rogers and Richardson, I can call him. And it did. It helped our business grow. <clears throat> Why'd you start making videos? Teaching people how to do things. I started because <laughs> I just love helping people. I mean, I was always, I always had a love of video and I had the, you know, the construction side and I merged those together. And when I started getting messages, messages that said, I was able to do this because of your video, um, that just, it's huge. Oh, it felt so good that I just kept it going. And then luckily it kind of took off and here I am. Roger Wakefield's so <laughs> outhouse good. right now. So, yeah, Roger's <laughs> outhouse. I have just retired. Uh, Kevin Orr says, I've just retired. I was a builder before I switched from my 26-year career. Right now, uh, I'd help anyone that would be willing to teach me. Right now, I'd help anyone that would be willing to teach me. I still get up at 4.30. And train almost daily. Kevin, good for you. Yeah. <clears throat> good for you. Rock bar is an amazing thing to have. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, you're going to get blisters from them. Jennifer Martinus says, I'm from Denmark, and I will call a plumber if needed. <clears throat> it's really funny because I used to, back when I had the plumbing company, I would travel around Dallas to real estate agents, go in their office, and talk to them. And sometimes I'd get invited in 
to, to talk to 10 or 20 of them to teach them about plumbing and home inspections and why the plumbing inspection is important and all that. Urban van life is in the house and they're headed right. to Dallas. I love it. Can I bring a ladder? You're funny, brother. Uh, Neil, good to see you in here. Uh, I remember walking into an office in Plano one day and, I, and I'm telling them about videos and why I do them and, and all this. And the lady literally said, look, you may say it's easy to fix my toilet, but I promise you I am not fixing a toilet. You don't have to. Went back about three months later. Same office, same lady. Says, I got to tell you, I called a plumber because she wasn't in my service area. I called a plumber because two of my toilets were leaking. I said, look, give me a price to rebuild all four of them. That way, just the next two don't start leaking. At $350 each, that's a major rebuild. Maybe a minor for him. I don't know. She said, Roger, I watched your video and I learned how to fix my toilets. There you go. You saved me $1,400. That's why I do what I do right there. So true there, Kevin. So true. Okay, and those came up everywhere. Need a recovery machine. I'm assuming you mean for HVAC. I'll tell you what, Milwaukee has got an amazing battery-powered vac that, dude, love it. Hey, Chris. Yeah, we need to talk. That's for sure. Planning on designing my high-pressure system for my new presidential build. Get you go. Water valves from where a tractor runs over the yard. Yeah, you can run into all kinds of fun things. Here at Tompkins says, I prefer the cold because plumbing is sweaty. And I just love plumbing. But I can do it out in the heat all day, every day. I mean, I've done it. It doesn't matter. Chris says, I like the cold when I'm working, the heat when I'm not. I live in the most northern major city in America and work six to seven days a week. Fun, fun, fun. I sweat more than copper fittings. I know that feeling. Uh, right here, right now in Texas, you will be. That is mm -hmm. for sure. Cole Gibson says, hi, I'm Cole, 13. I was wondering if you could be my mentor. I have been watching you for four years. I believe you could have really great advice. Cole, number one, I love that. Thank you very much. Uh, you're... I think you're the one that said you drove by and saw the sign, so you're close. At, at 13, it's hard to get in and, and do a lot with you uh, legally because of power tools and different things like that. But I'll tell you what, keep doing what you're doing. Watch the channels, and not just mine, watch the DIY, watch the construction, watch the new home builds. Have you ever thought that you'd like to build a new home, your own? I've thought about it, yeah. I think it'd be great. I had stud back in a couple of weeks ago, and that's one thing they hadn't done. Yeah. And now they're doing it. They're, they're starting with, it's so, so smart. They're literally building a garage apartment on the lot right next to the house. Yep. That way they can turn on the house and then build the house behind it. And I'm like, man, having, having, having in them was amazing. Yeah. It was good. They're, they're doing cool stuff. I would love to be able to build a house. <clears throat> uh, of. I chose the cold because I live in a metal box with poor ventilation. Metal Jake says, I, I work on a roof. I prefer heat over the cold. I can take a break from heat. It's dangerous. Dress like, like the Michelin man. Yeah. And you know what? I've been in that before. Uh, big popping jobs. So when you're working outside up north, how much do you have to put on to stay warm? And does that hinder your work? Yeah, it's, it's a battle because you want to, like I wear a sweatshirt with a hoodie um, and put a big thick coat over that and gloves. And then you try and get your pencil out of your tool belt. You're fumbling around and take your gloves off and your hands are freezing. You just got to kind of keep moving. Some days you just put on kind of a thick sweatshirt and just keep and moving. And then you're going to move 90 miles. Yeah. Uh, foundation sinking, drop bad. It, it can happen. Uh, only cold shower too when it is mad. Kevin Orr says, I want to be better every day. The sinking guy that came to my house, not so much. You know, and, and that's the problem with a lot of the trades these days. You get a lot of people into the trades 
that are here for a paycheck. That's all they're here. They don't care to learn. They don't care to do it right. They, and I don't mean it bad. It's just they're, they're not motivated. They're not excited about it. What do you think? Do you see people getting into remodeling, uh, flipping? Uh, flipping is the thing for everybody to get in because mm. it's quick, easy money. But if you don't do it right, yeah, is it worth it? It was quick, easy money. Now it's a little tough with the, the housing market. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people getting into the trades, I, I think you have to, you have to love it. If you, you know, you, you can do whatever you want, right? But if you don't love it, what's the point of doing it for X amount of time? You know what I mean? It's, it's not any fun. And, you know, look, the podcast is, we did earlier, guys. There's a link to it down below. One of the neat things about just about every guest I've had on her wants to be the best, wants to do things right each and every time. And when you get people like that, it is fantastic. Uh, so becoming better every day is good. But when you invite, and, that, and that's a problem too. Think about this. Kevin, if you invite different tradespeople in your house to do work, you compare all of us to that one person. And, I, and I'm not saying you personally. But as a remodeler, when you come in and the garage door guy ripped them off, well, you're a tradesman. Yeah. So you, they you're there already have that, that you, idea. You, you yeah. bet. They've, yeah. they've already stereotyped you. And I hate that. But, but guys, it, it's true. It, it really is. Uh, it was close. Trying to get right back where I was. I just wanted to do, jump up to that. Uh, so right after Kevin. There we go. Allegra says, what a great guest. I'm assuming you know Allegra. Hi, Allegra. La Parado. Fantastic. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, yeah, it, it is. It's wonderful. Uh, True Red Rash says, electric bill this month was 130 bucks. Construction cronies. Not metal. bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a whole lot worse. <laughs> uh, metal, yes, and if you're doing standing steam or something metal, I would hate be up there in snow, no doubt. Uh, 600 square foot building, one person, trailer rent, bills. The, the man, we, we've all got the bills. Uh, Butler says, wish me good luck. I have an interview of an open shop on Monday. So I'm assuming probably. now, how long has it been since you've walked into the job? Seven years, something like that, seven years ago. Okay. What advice would you give someone in the uh, trades? Don't have too much coffee before you go to the interview. <laughs> don't get it, like, all nervous and like you're bouncing, and ready to go. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I mean, ask ask them what what they you know what they expect from you. What a what their perfect candidate should look like. I love that. And be honest. And the good thing is, one thing I, I tell people about is, and think about this. That person is looking for something. They're looking for a need. They either need somebody to carry two by fours. Right. And and that may be where it starts. And 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 that can be a great place to start. Yep. Or they may be looking for someone that understands, you know, how to lay out a room, how to do this, how to do that. You've got to understand what their needs are. They may be looking for somebody with more experience. And if you don't have it, you you can't even lie your way through that. Because if you do, you're going to put yourself in a position where they're like, okay, here, lay out this room. And you're like, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. So you really want to look at the whole thing and talk to them. I know what their needs are. Can you tell me exactly what it is you're looking for? Yeah, we're, we're looking for somebody that can do this, this, this. Okay. And I see we got a super chat there. I want to jump over here and say hello to Plumbing Hotline USA. And I don't know if I can pull that back up over here. It says, I started Plumbing Hotline Service for virtual plumbing service. I've been watching you for years and love your videos. Can I link them on my website to send my clients to your videos and help them? Yeah, we can talk about that as long as you're putting a link to the video. Uh, I do let people do that. So, yeah, that, that's something I don't mind. As long as you're not saying I'll work for you or I'm going to be the guy coming out there. Anything like that. Uh, construction. Karani says, yes, Roger, we do that sometimes. Build two-story rooms in pre-engineered buildings. I can definitely steer you in the right direction. Right, I'll, I'll send you pictures. 
you know what? I don't have it set up. Literally, guys, we just moved. Uh, normally, I've got a thing set up where I can plug my phone in and show you pictures. As long as I don't show you the wrong ones. Uh, but, but man, Chris, this building was so cool. Uh, Dad and Eli Game Place, thanks for your videos. We appreciate you. If you're talking to him or me, either one, we both appreciate it. I promise. Yeah, thank you. We, we, we love what we do. Thanks for everybody. He's a video guy. Six years training in video. I've got zero. Uh, but we love it. And I'm often looking at things. I'm like, you know what? I want to see it from this point. I want to see, I want to see it like this. And that's when we cut back out of the toilet. We had Brecker White cut up the yeah, water heaters for us. Really cool, yeah. Neat stuff. Uh, Gary says, Yo, Roger, you should make a video of interaction between plumbers and remediation guys. I used to work with remediation people. I don't mind them at all. Uh, a lot of them are really good. Don't forget nails. You're still going down your list. I love that. Uh, yes, indeed. Chris says, I like the name Mikey Pops. Yeah, me too. I thought that was cool. Uh, Chris says, that I can do. I learned how to install heat pumps, vacuuming the lines. Most lines come pre-charged now. And see, we're looking, yeah, the mini splits. I was going to say, we're looking at, at Mitsubishi mini splits to put down there in this. So I've, man, I've got some great ideas. Got a question here. It says, do you have any good questions? Yes. Do you have any good questions? I can ask the interviewer. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, I got to interview on Monday with a plumbing company for Open Shop. Kenneth, one thing that I always like to ask is, how can coming to work here help me in my future? And don't get me wrong, you don't want to make it all about you, but you want them to understand that you want to do well. And to me, that's such a big deal. But but let them know, look, I want to go here. I don't want to do good things and how's coming to work here going to help me do you have a good question and a plumbing apprentice could come in and ask i think i hard i think this same thing i mentioned earlier just like what they need that's what you need mm -hmm. you know what what is this going to bring to the table for me what do you need me to bring to the table for you to be mm -hmm. successful good yeah. stuff uh that's when i heard pre-charged your pre-charge is great. 80 degrees in Virginia. It's a little warmer here. Chris says, yes, in Canada here, we use Sunville. Good in 40 degrees, negative 40 degrees Celsius. Even can blast the cool a few days of summer. It's hot. Oh, 40 degrees, negative 40 degrees. Right, what's the color this is this? in Massachusetts, Massachusetts. It can Mass get Massachusetts. It can get below zero, but nothing like that. We'll have like during a week span, we'll have like one or two days, maybe three days, where it gets like negative five in the morning. Oh, I, I've, I saw zero degrees one time in Michigan. Thought it was no, no Wisconsin. Thought it was nuts. And then in this year, last year in Dallas, it got to zero. Windshield was like negative two, negative five, and I'm like, what the what? <laughs> this year uh, wasn't too bad. Gil Garcia, hello, good to see you. Uh, what's up? Chris says, yeah, I remember plumbing my first time before YouTube. I couldn't get the copper to stay soldered. Yay, Flux. Yeah, Flux, you got to know what you're doing there. First work boots were from Kmart. Yeah, 30 years ago. Uh, and you know what? Looking back at mine, mine may have been Kmart, not Walmart. Mr. Niels. Oh, Vid Summit, me and Emma are going. Can't wait to see you guys. Yeah, if y'all don't know what Vid Summit is, Vid Summit is a YouTube conference. Uh, Mr. Darrell Eves puts it on, Mr. Beast will be there. Uh, Sean Duras is, is part owner of it. Mark, I think Mark Rober will be here. Man, there's so many good YouTubers, it's a blast. And I go through it every year. I'm still learning this. And it's phenomenal. And it's right in Dallas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, in, in Dallas, in Irving this year. Uh, so just a couple of miles the other side of Dallas. Great place. This is not a place to come hang out and think you're going to get your picture made with Mr. Beast. This is a place to come learn how to do YouTube. That's what it's all about. Uh, 
Chris's grandfather bought them for him. That's cool. I remember my dad giving me one of his one of his pair of boots, Red Wings, uh, old Red Wings. Those are good boots. And yeah, uh, but it's, it's it's what I got on. Uh, good stuff. Yep, got Neil in the house. Indeed, Matt has new twin boys. Congratulations! I do. So Thank how, you. How old are they? Four months. Yeah, and Mama lets you come all the way down to I Texas. Know. She's a saint. So I was gonna say she's she may be an angel. New twin boys and a two year old. Miss Amber Mendoza in the house. Thank you for booking everything and making everything happen. Uh, Avery and Jean bought me my first pair when we did the erosion control and silt fencing at Formula One. East Coast Mods that says hello from New Hampshire. Got a community in here. Uh, shout out to Avery and Jane from Round Rock, Texas. Love it down there. Uh, Texas brings the heat. So, Amber Mendoza, how was Metallica last night? That's what she did. Nice. Construction Crony says DIY wires aren't bad for me. Hard part of my trade is taping the drywall. You can't just pick up a trowel and get it right. It takes practice. It takes years. years. At that. It, it does. You got people like Chris, you got Paul Peck drywall too. There, there's yeah. people that when they show you the right way, there's some things I don't care how many times they show me, I still can't get it right. It's, it's fun. Uh, Nick or Neil, this one said, I can't wait to see you here. I was on Nick Memon earlier watching it and man, good stuff. And he's giving or he's giving away free tickets this morning. You might watch it every week coming up because I think he's going to be giving away free tickets all the time. David Starr says, "Please message me. I'm starting a plumbing hotline USA service. Would like to link your videos. Thank you, sir." Nathan E says, "Fans of both your channels, awesome to see you together. One of you reviewed a spray foam drywall patch that I did on YouTube. So it will be you. Uh, so cool to see you do it. Uh, my patches were." For against the ceiling, though, or for against the ceiling. Yeah. Thanks, Nathan. And yeah, that's the thing. There's so many different ways you can do things and different things for situations. Like those patches will totally, totally be fine. Um, but there's so many different options, so many different things you can do. We may have to watch that video. Uh, like I said, we just moved out of the office in Richardson, so we're going to have holes in the walls that you know TVs used to be hung on and things like that that we're going to have to fix. Uh, this has come to the UK, it's cold all the time. No, thank you. Uh, Joe DeMitt says, Roger Wakefield, do 90% of my own plumbing and mechanical work, zero reworks. I don't know when to draw the line to call in a contractor. Joe, I love that. And look, that's why we do what we do. And Matt and I've had this conversation. Look, we want to teach people the right way to do things. And it was so cool. And it's so funny. I was looking at the this monitor, I looked down because the way it was lined up with this logo. Your head was like right between the earphones, yeah. and I saw you there with the <laughs> earphones, and I'm like, okay, that that was pretty cool. Yeah, it goes away really fast. <laughs> Chris, I'd love to spend some time in the UK to learn the way to do things. It's different. Uh, finishing much more classical from what I've seen. So it's about ten thousand little Indians in the village. It takes a village to raise one, I guess. Jacob says, I rather have my skin sweat than have my bones hurt in the cold. Love to be a Texan. Jacob, I love it down here. I can handle the heat, but yeah, you get it too cold. I don't want to be there. All right. Talk to you all again. Thank you very much. How hard is it to install a bidet? It's really not hard, especially if you do the bidet toilet seat. Now, when you remodel your homes, are you putting an electrical outlet back behind the toilet? No. Dude. That's the thing that I know you're all about. Dude. I know. Oh, uh, wait till you try a bidet toilet seat. Yeah. You, you, okay. Okay. Miss Fixer, <laughs> you need to tell him, honey, you need to go back and put an electrical uh -huh. outlet. And I know you can do it because we've dropped them down the walls here. Y'all have got a basement. Just drill a hole up. It's not easy, hard to easy. do. Yeah. Come on. Tell him to put one in and then you contact me and I'll tell you which one. But a bidet toilet seat is almost like installing a normal toilet seat. It's not that hard. I'll have to look at the code for an outlet the toilet in the mass. Not, not an outlet, but oh, electrical outlet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll want to put it in a GFCI. Yeah. Uh, you want to. I didn't. I just put it in just a regular outlet. You know. 
We don't always do things right in our own homes. It's a lot of time, <laughs> my guys, because it was your mother's house or your grandmother's. Uh-huh. Well, there's yeah. perfect reason right there. Joe Demet says, Roger Wakefield worked in asbestos abatement and controls. Worked with many great contractors to make their work area safe for them to do their job. Joe, I love that because I work a lot of the remodel work out at DFW Airport and abatement is huge. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's not really a DFW. That's not something I go for. Yeah. Uh, how to install a bidet, clean the toilet, connect to water supply, and then hang it. It doesn't hang it. It sits on the toilet like a seat, but it is good stuff. Yeah. Twinsies. Chris, man. I'm, all I got to say is at my age, I'm glad he's got me. JW Blunt says, I need to get a few of the trades together to try and sell the trade to outgoing high school seniors across the state. That's why I talk about what I talk about. Uh, it's I'm literally trying to put that the course together to teach people how to get in the trade. I want to teach them how to plumb, how to pull wire, how to do anything. I want to teach them how to be the best tradesman ever. Jessica's the interview question. Is there anything in this interview that might be holding me back from getting the position? This can clarify any miscommunication that might have happened. Jessica, like that, that is phenomenal. Thank you. That is really good. Recruit students and prepare them for success. Absolutely. Robert Torres says, I hate drywall. It, it's a DIYer. I don't blame you. <laughs> what is your least favorite thing? Probably insulation, fiberglass. Yeah, I think all of us would agree with you on that. Yeah. Okay. So away from the obvious, <laughs> I mean, that's, you, 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 can't, you can't take enough cold showers. And do you, do you scrub down with pantyhose after it to get all the little fiber Yeah. I haven't uh, heard that. Yeah, my, my mom or grandmother taught me that. Really? Uh, when you're dealing with fiberglass insulation, take pantyhose and scrub yourself with it because the little nylon will grab the little pieces oh, of glass. That makes sense. I've just been doing a cold shower. I'm going to have to try that next Close time. the pores up, yeah. yeah. I get in and, and scrub with pantyhose first and then do the cold shower to close it up and push everything out. You get another pair of pantyhose and scrub again. Okay. Interesting. Drywalls where I stop. It's one for a lot of people. So penny ho- or penny ho- penny ho- you don't like. Uh, <laughs> insulation you don't like. Yeah. What's the next worse? Or, and, and, and not worse. None, none of them are, are horrible. Yeah. But but what, you know that's not really my favorite thing. But I'll do it. I like it all though. I like that that like drywall. That I, I love I love doing drywall. Um, even taping mud. May have to bring framework, back down then. Framing, I don't know at all. Insulation is just not my thing. Well, I, just I get do it. not like it. Uh, Chris has just started taping jobs outside of my own house. A few a few years back, uh, just this past couple of months, started doing videos on taping. Good for you. Try my best not to paint, but I'll do anything else. There you go. Oh, painting. I uh, read your okay, mind, Chris. That's one. I don't like painting. Yeah. That, and where you at? Yeah. Uh, got this up. Says, got any of your 21 year old kids stuck in limbo, confused on what to do? I'll tell you what, and, and yeah, I'll give you some great. Look at the area that you're in. Reach out to the biggest plumbing, electrical, HVAC companies and say, hey, are y'all hiring? Then do a little research, and, and I've got a, a little mini course on my, my channel that, that's free that teaches you about residential versus commercial, new construction versus service, and union versus non-union. Did you know about any of those differences when you went in to become? No. I, when I got into plumbing, I just said, I'm going to be a plumber. That's what I'm going to learn. You have no idea that there's commercial and residential. Big buildings or houses, there's service and new construction, there's building the house or repairing the house. <clears throat> and one of the things I always ask people, do you like to fix things or build things? Great way to figure it out. If you like building things, construction may be your jam. If you like fixing things, service work might be for you. Everybody needs a drill uh, from Walmart, stay there. J.W. Blunt says, <clears throat> need to hook up and do a trade seminar to outgoing seniors across the great state to bring them into the trades. I think it's more 
similar. I think what we've all got to make videos and content and put it out there and let people find it. Yes, indeed. Construction Crony says plumbing will be the most profitable trade, I believe, over the next 10 years. The wages should skyrocket. Chris, I've been telling everybody for, well, you've been around probably the last three, last two years. I think in, I've been saying two years ago, in five years, I think plumbers are making $100 an hour on the check. And then I really do. It's just, you're right. There's less people getting in, more people retiring. And the people that get in and learn, the people that get in right now, are the entrepreneurs in five to 10 years and we're going to need them. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the, the highest paying trade? It's got to be one plumbing electrical. It's, I mean, the specialty, you know, especially if places like Massachusetts don't allow you to do your own plumbing. So skill you know? for a license is required. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> uh, not sure. Texas is, is, is it a national of the Texas heat is as hot as this plumber? I love that. Just saying. T A double N Y A construction. And by the way, uh, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Construction cronies. Chris says all trades are a great option for kids now. We're losing 40% of our workforce to mass retirements last month alone. The housing crisis is becoming. Uh, or is because we have no one to build houses, all wages should rise. And Chris, you, you mean, you're so good on this because it, it's tough. And you say y'all lost 40%, and I'm not sure where you're getting numbers. I tell people that for each year right now, for every 10 people that get out of the trades, and that can be remodeler, it, it doesn't matter what it is, the trades, carpenter, plumber, drywaller, painter, window installer it doesn't matter for every 10 people retiring only four are getting back in so each year per retirement for every 10 that retire only four getting back in we're losing our numbers right there the average age for a licensed plumber journeyman or master don't remember in texas is 58 years old wow that means in seven years the average is retiring right guys it ain't good. Uh, drywall's a blast. I'll tell you what, I had my brother-in-law out here the other day, and he builds a lot of homes up in North Texas, South Oklahoma. He's right there on the river. And he says, now, and Chris, you may know about this. No, you may too. Instead of sheetrock on the inside, now they're putting the soffit board up. The soffit for outside. Yeah. And, and it's got like a, a pattern on it. And he's like, we'll, we'll put that up, nail it directly to the wall, insulate behind it. It can handle getting wet. Yeah. Which is better than sheet rock. Sheet rock, it's not too bad, but it's not. Hard. But the soffit board's made to be outdoors. So if it gets wet, it doesn't hurt it. He said, literally, they'll put that up and paint it, fill it off to the floor. Oh, I haven't heard of that. That's he builds hotels and, and hotel rooms, apartment type stuff. And, and it's just small ones. So we'll a, a four, four plex or something like that. But that's what they're doing. And he says it works. I've uh, stippled insulation. Yeah, I've, I've done that when I was a kid. Roger, fiberglass and me are like water and oil. Just don't mix well. I well, agree. I don't think there's many people. Oh, I did have a guy in. Dimitri last week and he was talking about a job he had doing insulation. Yep. And he said that there was this guy that worked with him and this guy was just phenomenal. He said this guy could do so many bags of insulation a, a day and they got paid by the bag. So this guy just once he hit the attic, he was like 90 miles an hour. He never quit moving. And it's like, God, I'd never want a job doing insulation. So I'm knocking out in four hours a whole exterior wall. Good for you. Uh, painting is not fun. Says, or yeah, if you're still here, uh, God, re remember this. My professor once confronted me and said, why are you coming to class with no books? I said, I don't know. There you go. Joe Demet says, in many skilled trades, you can earn more than many college degrees. Yeah, you can learn a lot more. 
you made good money doing the remodeling. Mm. Not really. You bought a house. Uh, well, that was after I made the switch. Ah, yeah. So it. I mean, we did all the work for flipping the house, right? Okay. So, you know, hourly employees you got doing it. the work. This is where I learned everything. Made the switch to working at um, a different company, making video. Then I bought my house, merged the two together, mm -hmm. and we're here. <clears throat> It's a good way to pay for a house. Use it to make content. <laughs> Just to say, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> book says live. There you go. Construction cronies says we're also building houses 23% less month over month right now. Uh, keep up on the numbers. We just a podcast talking about the housing crisis. So the numbers are fresh. I love that. Uh, there's a lot of construction going on in Dallas, around Dallas, building homes and stuff like that. So I still see it. But yeah, it's probably got to be not near as much as it used to be. Ricky Neal, what is up? It says, at a time when we need double production to lower the prices, in Canada, we need to be building 600,000 a year. 600,000 houses a year to keep up with demand and immigration. We will be lucky to build 2,100. Wow. How are homes, are homes easy to get in Massachusetts right now? We're actually currently looking to buy a house and it's tough right now. <laughs> uh, they go so quick and there's not a lot of them out there. Mm. So finding your, your dream house now is not, not, just finding a house is hard. Or find 10 acres that has a lot of land open in the back and a lot in the front and build and build uh <laughs> and first of all repair what is there yeah and, and then build so yeah there's always opportunity uh and I, I said that guys we we just walked through the property and i showed him what all we're doing uh while mace says make sure to like this video guys, yeah if, if you're here uh yeah because we've had over 60 people here, 17 thumbs up man I must be doing something wrong today. I'm, not, I'm normally pretty good about that. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, 45. So it's, it's better than I thought. I'm doing okay. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> and I'm going to go live right there so I see the live comments. Beautiful. So t tell me this. Yeah. When did you draw the line in DIY versus professional? If it wasn't for licensing, Do you think anybody can fix their own plumbing, their own electrical, and their own HVAC? I think within reason. I think people know their limitations, or I think people have to know their limitations, right? So you could walk in, if you're anything like me, you walk into the house with 10 bags of groceries because you don't want to take a second trip into the house. You could hurt yourself that way, um, right? Me, so, me, me, me and Randy, it's like, how many bags of groceries can I get on my arms? Uh -huh. Because I'm not walking back home. So you know that you could hurt yourself doing that. But you know, anyways, admit it. Be careful. Yes. Right. You're right. So yeah, I do think anybody can can do it. Uh, you just got to know yourself, and if you're willing to learn, you know, watching videos, uh -huh. watch rock videos, watch my videos. I think Absolutely. you can do it. Yeah. So starting out as, as a homeowner, if you owned a home right now, or just bought a home. You're not you, so you're not a contractor. You hadn't done this yet. What tools would you recommend somebody buy to start out with? Just a drill. Get a drill. Great place to start. Yeah, no, a hammer. A hammer. A tape measure. Um, yeah. Just one of those little toolkits. One of those all-in-one, like the screwdrivers, the pliers. You know, keep that under the sink. When something happens, you know. At least you got some. Exactly. And, and if you need to buy something, you can go out and buy it. And you know. most men, and I mean nothing against women, so please don't think this. Most men love the opportunity to go buy a new tool. It's true. What tools out there that you want right now that you haven't bought where you're like, oh, God, I really want one of these? I'd love to have a uh, planner. I don't have a planner. An elder, like a big oh, planner. Like, like a, planner. a real like planner. A tabletop. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like that. That's one tool. 
I like that. Uh, Jeremy Farrell says, HVAC is ridiculous. Blower fan broke. No one around would sell it to me. It took 30 minutes to replace a week shipping because homeowners just can't have things available to them. You know, and Jeremy, I think things are getting better for that. I can get on the internet and find any blower motor I want. I can get on and find any plumbing part that I want, but I know where to go look and know how to go look. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I normally start with Google. Uh, normally, there's somebody out there that wants to make money selling blower motors. And if you can find who sells them and contact them and say, look, I need a, a, a 1930s Husqvarna blower motor. And you're like, dude, I've got okay the right place it, but you never know i just i think that and, and i'll tell you what too there, there's a place here in dallas i love this place adam the answer man and i kid you not i've got the number stored on my phone if they've helped me replace ice makers dryer vent or, or dryer motors uh dryer burner assemblies the control switch on the washing machine, you can literally call and talk to them and say, okay, look, I'm standing in front of my washer, it doesn't work. I'm like, okay, what is the model number? What is the serial number? And they'll pull it up. And they'll take you through these steps and say, okay, what's it not doing? It's not draining. Okay, push the lever, turn it to here, pull this to this. Does the motor kick in? Does it pop? Does it click? Does it do this? They know the wow. things to go through and ask you. And then they're like, I can have this part here today or I can have this part here tomorrow. That's so cool. Talking to somebody like that. Oh my gosh. Makes a world it of difference. It is phenomenal. So man, there's places like that. And, and me, that's why it's in my phone. Cause if I needed a blow motor, I would get one, but I'm a bulldog with teeth. I'm <laughs> not giving up till I get it. And I mean, it might be like dinner's ready. It's like, yeah, well i give me a little bit. I'm going to be here because I, when I do it, I do it. Uh, there you go. Cast it to your TV. I look better when I'm bigger. Jennifer, I like painting inside and out. I'm a handy woman and I like to fix my own home. Always did. I like Matt's videos. Well, Matt likes you because you're a painter. So you, you, may, you, you may <laughs> say, hey, look, uh, you got a house you need painted. I can do it. <laughs> Just saying, take something that you enjoy doing and turn it into a career watching there you go love that Joe Mitt says roger have fun in the nightmare issues in the homes roger have have run okay roger have run into the nightmare issues with newer homes where a big name contractor did not enforce good quality control and joe i gotta tell you uh they did not like me when i bought my house and i bought my house 22 years ago and you know, they give you, when you buy a new house, they give you the roll of blue tape and it's just blue masking tape. And when you walk through and see something that you don't like or needs to be fixed, put blue tape on it. In about five minutes, I went through the roll of blue tape. I went to Home Depot and bought 10 rolls of blue tape. <laughs> when you walk through my house, it looked blue. It would be like a, 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 a skim mark in the, the plaster. It's like guys look at texture, and there's just this line here. Uh, there were curved sheetrock between the windows, like the whole column curved a little bit. It's like, wait, that ain't right. And I mean, I went through, I walked back in, and they're like, look. Uh, and I walked back in, and all the tape was gone. And I'm looking, it's like 90% of the problems are still there. I said, Roger, you want everything 100% perfect. I'm like, well, with what I'm paying for this, yeah. Mm. And they said, it's not going to be perfect. You've got to figure out what are your deal breakers? What can you not handle? So like the curve column, some of the center marks and the plastic, and I'm like, you know what? I can fix that later. Of course I didn't, but yeah, that's kind of the way it is. Has quality control gone down? You, we talked in the podcast about a good flipper and a bad flipper. Mm -hmm. How bad are the bad flippers? Uh, I mean, well, go ahead I'll and just, be honest. No, I'll just go from just the videos that you see. Okay. From these, these like inspectors, 
will show, you know, these cover ups of, of literally painting over rotted wood. You can put your finger right through it okay. or, you know, uh, cutting ceiling joists out completely and the whole ceiling's just hanging there. They just covered it up with insulation. Can't see the frame. The framing's good if it's covered, right? You know, that that's the the scary stuff. You know, the structural stuff um, is the scary stuff. Who knows what's hidden behind the walls when you when you can see that stuff? You know, me as a plumber, I get called in sometimes saying, "Hey, look, we bought a house, and for some reason, we're getting a sewer gas smell." And we'll go over them. They didn't even put a P trap. They just came out and ninety up into the bottom of the sink. It's like, well, yeah, you're getting raw sewer gas straight through here. And they're like, well, how's that? It's never happened to any other house we've been in before. Well, whoever did this didn't know what they were doing. They didn't hook it up right. So not good. And apparently you don't need that planer because Miss Fixer says you have them all. <laughs> yeah, all the tools. Yes. There's always more. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, I, I shout out to Milwaukee. Uh, I was in Milwaukee two weeks ago. I it may have been last week. Uh, I want to say two weeks ago, but it was last it was a week ago. Not this last week, but a week before. I got invited as a plumber, so I got to see the plumbing and mechanical tools. Then they sent me to the landscaping tree trimming, then to the general contractor, then to the automotive, then to the electrical. And I mean, I'm black. I want new toys. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. So... Miss Fixer, as much as I would love to tell you, look, you're probably right. Yeah, a man can never have enough tools. There's always something we need. <laughs> just so you know. The man says, just bought a plumbing 101 book. Going to study it, then apply as an apprentice open shop. Good for you. Number one, read the book, but do what you're doing. Be here watching videos. Here's why. You get to see how it's done. We could look, tell people how to fix everything. But when they see you pull off an old toilet flange, replace it, solder the new one down, man, stuff like that is huge. Yeah. So, no man, do what you're doing. Watch the videos, see what, how we do things, why we do things. When you can walk in and tell somebody, hey, do you have any experience plumbing? Well, yeah. I mean, I know how to change faucets, toilets, rebuild a toilet, do this, do this, do this. But don't just watch the video. Talk to mom and dad if you live at home. Hey, mom, look, if you'll go buy two new faucets, I'd like to change them out for you. I need a basin wrench. I need a, a water meter key in case we need to turn off the water. Know what you need. Let mom, say, mom look, I'm going to remodel your bathroom. We a new toilet. I'd like to change that out too. Learn to do things. What do you think about that? Great, great way to do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to practice, you know, and if even if you get that free tool out of it to do another job and to learn how to do that one, and then keep going that way for sure. You got to, you got to try, you got to just do it. See, Miss Fixer, I'm going to tell you what you just heard. He's going to come up with a job where he needs that planner. He's going to say, Well, honey, look, that's right. Yeah, you know, I could get you these shelves you want if I had this planner. So mm -hmm. I just say, Fair warning, Mr. Shreves, check you out. Just joining in golf today do you golf i don't golf what do, you, what do you do when you're not working well if you want to get out i know you'd love to go camping mm -hmm. uh talked about that every year. Yeah. yeah every year love it uh and i love camping i think it's great i got to go glamping which he said up here we would laugh at you uh got to go glamping in acadia national park went hiking i've never hiked do you hike i hike when i'm camping Okay. That's about it. No, no, that's cool. <laughs> I had never hacked. So I show up with the guys you met last night. Yep. Uh, except for David, the one that sat next to me. Everybody else was there. We go to Acadia, fly into Boston, fly a little puddle jumper, clear bay, something that takes you to the Acadia airport, which didn't even know, more Harbor Main Airport. And they said, hey, we're going hiking today. I said, cool. I've never been. Didn't tell them that. I think they figured it out pretty quick. We go eat breakfast first, and then we get ready to go hiking. Or well, did you bring anything? It's like, no. What, what should I have brought? Well, I've got all my Adidas Stan Smith tennis shoes, my little white jog socks or whatever, pair of shorts, tank top. Don't even think I had a hat. 
I have sunglasses. And we start hacking, and all of a sudden, we are hacking. And after about three hours, two and a half hours, we had did 14, 1500 feet. Yeah, I don't do that kind of hiking. And <laughs> walked like three miles. Wow. It was probably where Stephen King filmed part of Pet Cemetery. Because of all the little stone sculptures. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. And we get to the top, and they're talking. I said, you know, two of them hacked all the time. They're like, hey, man, how, how, how rough is this one? So, so we, you know, out of, out, of a, out of 10, this is like a seven, eight. And I'm like, like, like seven or eight, the hardest one you've ever done. Like, it's like, well, well, yeah. It's like, oh, wow. They said, what about you? I said, well, I've, I've never hacked before. And they're like, what? I said, I've never hiked before. He said, we're wondering why you're wearing tennis shoes. <laughs> no sun protection, no water, no backpack. No and you're just in tennis shoes. And I'm like, I've never hiked. And they're like, dude, you're a beast. They're like, you didn't even slow down. You're like leading the way and cutting a path and going through the trail. And I'm like, I, I do everything. Uh, and I want to do it good. I don't want to do it. Guys, it's getting hot out here. Can we go back down yet? I'm like, you know what? Either I want on the very top or I want to go. So, yeah. And I live on a golf course, which brings me back around to this, Chris. And I don't play. Uh, I, I, I go over to the driving range every now and then, or used to, hadn't been in years. I've had both shoulders operated on. It's a great exercise for me. I just need to get out more and do it. I've tried. i just not, not good at it. I still try. I try every time. Golfer. I just, yeah. I don't try enough. Rip and Fear says major utility fixes aren't usually covered by insurance. Biggest wall my clients hit and end up calling in professionals. Some utilities are. If they've got a slab leak, if the plumber can speak insurance, some are. So it's a good way to put make sure your plumber knows how to talk to insurance companies. Uh, Chris is something. Uh, Gareth says nothing against women. Uh, uh, look, I love look Roger Wokefield. Okay, wait a minute. Here's the thing: I support women in trade. So if you're trying to go somewhere wrong with that, it ain't gonna work. I support women in the trades, and if you don't, this ain't the place to bring it up. Uh, nice. My uh, mom love Adam. Adam the answer man is phenomenal. If, if y'all hadn't heard of it, you need to check it out. Steve, 1945, says, I was lucky enough to have a dad teach me a ton and have me do repairs under his supervision. I feel confident. Is up The confidence was up with know-how as far as DIY. Practice on scraps if possible. My dad had me work with him when he worked on the cars. If he's changing the brakes, changing the alternator, anything like that, it's like, come on. And it wasn't, hey, do you want to help me? It's, come on. Yeah. We got a job to do. Let's go do it. And at first, I hated it. Then it was like, okay, wait, I want. Here, you get up there and pump the brakes. Tell me what to do down there. So it, it you start learning. What about you? Yeah. Learn, learn working with your hands growing up? Uh, no, I was never interested in it. You know? So funny. My, so, yeah. And my dad, same thing. Big on working on cars. Um, and would always fix my car, but not being interested in that either. Um, he would kind of just, you know, let me do my thing and he would do his thing. And looking back, I wish I stuck around and, and learned stuff, uh, asked questions. And, but hindsight is 2020, right? Yes, it is. Guys, for, for those of y'all that don't know, there, there's a link up top. It's a link to the other YouTube channel. That is where the podcasts go. It's called the Trade Talks. Go over there, subscribe. You'll get to see the video of Matt and my interview that we did earlier. And also, if you haven't subscribed here, do that way. You'll get to see the video that we did earlier. Uh, look, kid at Walmart, flapper, spray foam, lots of good stuff. Optimize. Howdy. How we know? Uh, uh, you're spinning. Is that the camera movement? 
It, yeah, it, it, it may be. If you mean if you mean the slider, yes, indeed. This is actually a huge platform that's spinning. I know. We, we turn the cameras <laughs> they put. We just it spins us around. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Chris plays once a year. Yeah, I hadn't played in a few years. <clears throat> Michael Wallace says, "Hi, Matt. Love your stuff." Hey, Mike. Mike. Well, Mike Wallace. Women are great in the trades. I, I tell you what, and Chris, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, some of the top women in, or some of the top plumbers in Texas are women. The executive director, Lisa Hill, that's for plumber. Every endorsement. Uh, Mary Conger, uh, continuing ed instructor, master plumber, engineer. Every endorsement. Uh, Diane Villarreal, former chief plumbing for city of Dallas. Master plumber, every endorsement. So, uh, women in the trades are amazing. Women in the trades are cool, not in planes. Don't get that. Uh, I've had female pilot teams that I think are phenomenal. Uh, we need more women. Only 2% of our workforce is women. We need workers so bad. I have a huge success with them working for me. I love to see women get in the trades. I do. I, I think that they excel, I think that they do things better. Don't get it bad. Uh, I think they're more. Do you ever work around any women flippers or DIYers? Unfortunately, not in the trades. No. Hey, Matt, you do great work. Alexander. Joe Demet says Roger Wakefield worked outside and everything from 120 to 101 wind chill. Just takes a little creative adapting. Boy, isn't that the truth? I am actually drinking. Tea. I stopped by the house. I drink uh, the Tazo Zen green tea. I'm at a construction or not a construction. I'm at a mastermind thing this week. I got some guys here in Dallas. Uh, we all went to dinner, took Matt to dinner last night. It was really, really good. Really good. What, what do you think about my restaurant? It's amazing. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not many places you can go and have a good steak and then maybe tear up a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at, 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 at seven o'clock, went and we, we had dinner, but we were really done at 6.30. Well, the, the restaurant is Texas. It's here in Richardson. If you've never been, Texas steak, seafood, and final. Really good food. Really good food. The service is probably even better than the food. And that's hard to say because this is one of the best steaks I've ever had. But then the, the, the ambiance, the, the building itself, the way it's built, and it is all about Texas. And the owner comes up, the owner's daughter comes up, everybody comes by to say hi to see how you're doing. And they've got a musician that, that stands on the landing on stairs, going from downstairs to upstairs, and plays music, uh, plays the guitar, the saxophone, the flute, uh, all kinds of stuff. But at seven o'clock, they play the national anthem. What what what, what happens in the restaurant when it plays? Just silence until one person starts singing, and then everybody started singing. It was pretty incredible. It's so funny because I had told the guys about it because I just wanted them to understand why we were going to hang around. We literally finished eating at six thirty, and then we were talking about dessert, and a couple of us ordered dessert and. Dale, the owner, said, you know what? I, I got some desserts. I, I need to get rid of. I thought, okay, he's gonna get, he's gonna give us old desserts. <laughs> he literally has an entire tray made and and brought out, and it was a complete dessert tray, seven or eight different desserts on yeah. it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll try it, one of everything. And I mean, everybody at the table, everybody had said no to dessert. At that point, everybody's digging in. Uh, everybody but Mike. Mike said Dill was the devil because he's serving us dessert. Uh, that's the way he looks at sugar. It was so much fun. But when the national anthem starts, everybody stands up, faces the flag. They've got a cool flag that was, if I'm not mistaken, in Pearl Harbor. And it only has 48 stars. It hangs above this huge fireplace. And when the air conditioning's on, the wind blows on, this flag waves. It is just, you could not make this stuff up. And then, like Matt said, everybody stands up for the national anthem. Then somebody starts singing, and everybody's singing. Every Friday and Saturday night. Guys, it is cool. 
Chris says, my 16-year-old son has been apprenticing with me this summer. We have been working a lot out of town. It's been the best summer ever. So proud of this kid. Man, I love that, Chris. And, and to me, that's how to get on it. My son used to work with me. Uh, then when he wanted to get in the union, I got him in thinking he'd become a plumber. And he becomes a pop fitter, but he loves it. That is cool. Uh, Bultron Heroes says, guys, we're out here in West Texas, Nebraska. I'm about to show you how to unclog the six-inch mountain clay shark bite shower valve. I'm wearing my knee pads, hard hat, and tinted safety glasses. Man, way to go. Put that one up here. Chris says, I had many positive male role models that taught me a lot of good stuff. My two daughters and my two sons love learning from me. And, you know, men, we just keep on teaching. Uh, sorry, you declined as a telemarketer. Uh, passing your skills, future generations. Brother Sean Strong is in the house. Currently at the zoo with my kids, but hope everyone's having a great weekend. There's the link to the Rogers Discord group. If you hadn't checked it out, go to it. There's the link to the subreddit. And Sean, is it? brother, good to see you in here. Why me? Says I put myself through school working for an alarm company i was their token female installer i was literally told that because there was a serial rapist in Vegas. wow snooze the kids says currently in the military i see so much potential for the trades i wish there was more apprenticeship opportunity for an evening shift so i could start training and working part-time man i understand that and I, I really i wish there was too uh I guess that's what I'll end up building here. Uh, I'm building a, a training center for slab leaks, leak detection, and, and repairs. Uh, maybe build a, an evening training center. Chris has learned how not to teach from my dad. Uh, it takes patience. YouTube's greatest lesson to me is how to teach people effectively, encourage them to work hard, and do a good job. I love it. Voltron Heroes says, I have a question. Then put a cue in front of it and put it in here, and we'll get to it if you hurry because we're about out of time. Uh, just as I've always taught everyone I will train, if you're not going to do it right, don't do it. Amen. Good deal. Uh, it is the way. If a task has once begun, never leave until it's done. Uh, do the labor great or small, do it once or not at all. Hey, look at you put it all together. Opinion on Black Lives Matter. I think that everybody's got their groups for a reason. And they do what they got to do. And the dog's out in the other end. Chris says, when we build walls, <clears throat> when we build walls, if the framing isn't right, the drywall tape and paint is going to suffer. If the plumbing doesn't fit, we have a problem. It just goes six inches. Don't stuff it into my fours. Yeah, I like that. Give us six-inch walls. Give us enough to work in. Matt, where can everybody find you? I'm on YouTube. Search The Fixer. You'll see what of me you can find me on facebook instagram tiktok uh just search the picture and see my face optimal says love you babe i guess that related that you? I, I, I don't know <laughs> i don't know it's all of us. Well, yeah hey everybody loves us babe i like that uh i want to say special thanks to chris constructions to cronies being in here sean strong brother thank you for being uh i, I know that you're out at the zoo with your kid and stuff like that. Uh, let me see if I can do something here real quick, just because I know that he's in here. Uh, there we go. Uh, we'll do that. Okay, so Chris, if you're still in here, you are now a moderator, just in case anything ever happens. So good to have you in here. Uh, Sean Strong, thank you. Randy Wakefield, uh, man, Matt, thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, thank you, Roger. Love what you do. Love watching it. Uh, yeah. I, Chris, I definitely do want to talk to you about what I'm wanting to do here. It may be a great thing for me to do. Watch some of your videos, lay it out, learn what it's best to use and build it down here, and we can have fun. Guys, I want to say thank you. I'm actually fixing to head across Dallas to a mastermind again. Uh, we shot a ton of videos yesterday I'm gonna be doing it again today and then tomorrow i get back to normal i get to come home and do laundry like everybody else there you go uh so it will be fun i just want to say thank y'all 
I hope you got good value out of today. If you did and you like what we did, man, give us a thumbs up. Tell us, hey, love it. Let you know that you liked it. If you didn't and you feel like getting thumbs down, at least hit it twice. And it goes away. Guys, thank you very much for being here. I do appreciate it. And hopefully we will see you all next week. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, helping you make more money in the trades.